The 2003 win of the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance with American Splendor. It also captured the International Critics Award at Cannes this year. The film is an adaptation of a comic book created in 1976 by Cleveland file clerk Harvey Picar. Here is the trailer for American Splendor. I have always been a file clerk. Would you get me some water and a few aspirin? Oh, you got a headache? No, but I want to avoid one. You should try believing in something bigger than yourself. It might cheer you up. What a way, she's depressed. Joining me now, the filmmaker Sherry Springer Berman and Robert Puccini, actor Paul Giamatti, who served as Harvey Picar in the movie, and the real Harvey Picar, who simply plays himself. I am pleased to have all of you here. Thank you. Nice to be Thank here. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whose idea was this, Harvey? Well, I have had people approaching me to do a film since about 1980 based on my comic books, but nobody could raise the money. Uh, it was optioned a few times, but that's about as far as it got. In 1999, um, an artist that had worked with me told me about a, a guy named uh, Ted Hope, who worked with a local company, Good Machine, local uh, independent film company that was real interested in doing something uh, based on the American Splendor series. And uh, I had my wife, who's much better in business than I am, uh, <laughs> call him up and. Uh, <laughs> he <laughs> and and is they this? had a deal. What is this? Go ahead. <laughs> they had a deal. They had a deal in very short order, and and he's the one that put it together pretty much uh, from the, there on. He, as far as I'm concerned, is the un, unsung hero of of the the production so far, and unless he starts getting sung pretty soon. <laughs> uh, now, would you would you evaluate the reason you've been so extraordinarily successful as unvarnished genius? Or would you consider it simply a couple of good breaks along the way, and all of a sudden you're a big star? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> what if I said unvarnished genius? <laughs> well, well, there, go for it. There you go. Unvarnished. Unvarnished. Good foolish. You don't want to be a varnished genius. No, no, Whatever no. you are, never be a varnished genius. Yeah. <laughs> you want or to be unvarnished. BG. Yeah. <laughs> BG. That's right. Uh, yeah, I had some good breaks. Uh, yeah. The one tremendous break I had, the first break, was uh, when Robert Crumb, who was a friend of mine... Yeah. Uh, Pretty good cartoonist, would you yeah, say? Yeah, I would say. <laughs> uh, agreed to... Uh, well, he didn't agree to. I didn't even ask him. I was afraid to ask him, but I showed him some of my stories. And he said, yeah, this is pretty good. You know, like, let me illustrate this. Let me take this home and illustrate it. Well, what do you it. think he saw? Well... <laughs> I'll save, the tough, I'm going to save the tough questions for later. <laughs> uh, what do I think he saw? He saw, uh, I don't know, uh, some humor and, uh, you know, maybe some, uh, some accurate portrayal of people that he knew and stuff like that because he did know a lot of the same people or same yeah. type of people that I, I knew. Uh, we lived together in the same neighborhood for about uh, four years. And mm. Anyway, that was, that was a tremendous break because... Um, it gave me, a, you know, a leg up starting out. Yeah, when crumb comes around, that gives you a leg That's up. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> sure That's right. Sure does. Sure does. <laughs> so, Robert, what did you and Jerry see? I mean, how does this become a movie? Well, you know, Ted Hope started sending us these comics. We weren't really that familiar with them. I mean, this is the American Splendor here. I'm going to give you an example of it. Yeah. Well, what you'll notice if you look through them is Harvey's drawn by all these different artists. Yeah. So when I first got them, I'm like, is this the same character right. as I read about in the last story? This is art by Mr. Crumb right here. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So then, you know, we talked about it, and we, and we fell in love with the project, but we talked about, you know, what to do with this, and um, we realized, like, all those different artists' interpretation of him was what made this comic book unique. So we thought we'd try to do something similar in the movie. Yeah. But the movie's interesting. There are three narratives. Three narratives. Right. <laughs> well, there's there's more than three. More Harvey. than three. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah. There's Harvey. There's Harvey at different ages in the yeah. movie. There's yeah. a young kid playing him. Right. 
There's um, Paul Giamatti's Harvey. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. animated Harvey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donald Logue's Harvey. Mm -hmm. Donald Logue stage. plays the stage version <laughs> of Harvey. The many faces of Harvey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you guys had to earn his trust, and especially you had to earn Joyce's trust, yes? Especially Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> especially Joyce. I was, I was hooked from the start. I, they didn't have to bother with me. <laughs> you said, I'm, I'm in. you got to go that's get that right. turn. We didn't have to do anything yeah. to... Uh, now, what were her reservations? I, I think that Joyce is very protective of Harvey. You know, over the years, a lot of people have, you know, come to him with offers to do a lot of things, and she wanted to make sure that, you know, this is their life, you know, and wanted to make sure they were getting into business with the right people. Yeah. But, I mean, all of a sudden, you've been on The Letterman Show. I've been on The Letterman, yeah. You know, Letterman right. a number of times. You've been offered Eight. your own show by Fox, talk show. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yeah that actually... I was told, yeah, somebody called me about that. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't go into it any further because I don't want to do it. I could You'll have be, been a no, gigantic do hoax. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, stick to really creative stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like drawing cartoons. <laughs> like stories. You know. okay. So Joyce was convinced, finally, that she could trust the filmmakers. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. surprised she even doubted it for a minute. <laughs> you mean she actually expressed any doubt to you yeah. guys? Did she? Not to us. Behind yeah. my back? Yeah. <laughs> what, was, it, was it hard to get money for this? Well, initially we were pitching it around for independent financing, and um, we, you know, we had some interest, but we knew it was going to take a few years. Uh, but then Ted encouraged us to pitch it to HBO because they have this independence yeah. division. And you know, we walked in and pitched it, and uh, the executive there, Martin Adler, said, I want to do it. You know, it was kind of amazing. And actually, from the day we pitched it to when we had a cut was a year. So everything happened very quickly on this movie. And, 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 and did you see immediately think of Paul as the, your guy? He was on our first list. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice. you were. Very nice. Yeah. But, um, you know, when he actually came in and read. A-list Paul. A-list Paul. A -list. That's right. First-list Paul. Yeah, first-list. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about A-list. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was up at the top of the list. You know. well, I didn't know that. That's right. Yeah. Nice. So, what do you, so how did you, you just hang out? How did you prepare for this? Oh, well, I went in and then auditioned for these right, guys, right. and they told me. They, so they gave me what tape existed of Harvey, so I watched some of the Letterman stuff. But the best way was to read all of his stuff. And then you get what? I don't know. I mean, you get the mood of the thing off of this. You know, you get the real, you know, you get the essence of the man in there. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know but where there's actually, the, the drawings were really inspiring to me, too. Crumb's drawings were great, and it's got yeah. Jerry Shamway does. I really like Jerry Shamway's yeah, drawings. He's, he's and so the, best. The, the books were the best for the two. So, and then I hung around him. So let's too. assume there's somebody on, on the planet Earth that doesn't know who Harvey is. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's accurate? Okay. You think so, Harvey? At this point. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to tell him? How do you describe who he is? I don't know. I mean, the, or his story. What is his story? Well, Characterize it. Story. I mean, I suppose Harvey is a, uh, I don't know, what would you call him? Uh, working class intellectual. Working, working class, class intellectual. intellectual. Self educated genius. Self unvarnished genius. Unvarnished <laughs> genius. Right, roll tape. Here is a scene in which Harvey has an epiphany while waiting in a checkout line. You'll get the story here. Epiphany. Epiphany, yeah. <laughs> All a working stiff like you can expect? You're gonna suffer in silence for the rest of your life, or you're gonna make a mark, huh? 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 Okay, I have the money right here. Even money, a dollar fifty. You don't even have to open the cash register. Even change and do. What's interesting about this, from a film cinematic standpoint, cinematic. I see why you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> I often wonder myself. <laughs> you, you can use the animation. I yeah. mean, you can mix. Yeah, I mean, techniques. that's the way. That's the way we wrote the screenplay. Is we, you know, we had animation in it. We had the documentary. We had little mm. placeholders for the documentary. Right. Uh, we just felt like you know this. It was a groundbreaking comic book, so we had to do something you know innovative with the material. Yeah, roll tape. I want to take a look at another one. This is where. Mr. Crumb checks out Harvey's work and offers, as Harvey told us earlier, he'd like to illustrate it. Good. Really, you think so? Yeah, this is great stuff. I dig it. <laughs> Can I take him home and illustrate him? Wow, man! You couldn't be better than that. Is that exactly the way it was? 
You just said. No, I wasn't in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, where were you? I was in my apartment. You know, he was he was crashing with me. He used to take these cross country drives every year. He yeah. couldn't drive, so he'd go with a couple of guys. They'd chauffeur him around. <laughs> so he he was driving his '56 Cadillac Eldorado across the country, and he came to Cleveland and he stopped at my house. So I had had all these ideas about doing, a, you know, new new kind of comics. Because I, th I thought there was all kind of potential in comics that hadn't been explored. And I did a, uh, you know, a story for him using stick figures and, uh, you know, frames and uh, balloons and captions and stuff. And I, I showed him a bunch of the stuff and I said, what do you think of it? I was, I, you know, I, in the back of my mind, I was hoping, God, I hope he, you know, I hope he offers to illustrate it, but he'd never illustrated anything for anybody else but himself yeah. before. And and I really thought, you know, I mean, he didn't. I, even I didn't have enough nerve to ask him to, you know, to to do something <laughs> like that. But he, you know, he looked at him. And he he volunteered, mm. man. Hey, he volunteered. Whatever your technique <laughs> is, it worked. <laughs> yeah. You held him to his word. The hard sell. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the soft sell. And there were, yeah, there yeah, were that was soft. There were uh, there was a, another cartoonist with him by the name of Bob Armstrong, and <clears throat> and uh, I gave Armstrong some of the work, and Crump took some of it out to um, uh, to the West Coast with him, and he and he was showing it around to some other artists out there, and and they decided they wanted to do some of it, so. You know, I mean, I owe, I owe the guy an awful lot, I really do. How are you going to pay him back? I'm going to put him in a movie and show the good side of him. <laughs> <laughs> the um, was it was it fun to be part of this movie? Yeah, I liked it. Took it what a year to make? No, oh. I mean the shoot. Well, the shooting, yeah. the shooting was what about a month? twenty-four, 24 days. Twenty-four days, but that's a budgetary Crazy. thing, right? It was very yeah. low budget, and it was a really short shoot. Yeah, crazy. But it was it was really enjoyable. But for you're me. sitting there watching him make a movie of your life. No, I wasn't. I wasn't watching that at all. I was, <laughs> he was, I was out just at the craft service <laughs> table having donuts. Is what he was doing. Yeah, or you know, talking to some of the many bright people connected <clears throat> with the movie that weren't doing anything yeah. else at the time. Now, do you remember the first time that you two met? Yeah. 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 And so yeah. you're looking him over, saying. And I wasn't looking him over at all. No, he didn't seem to be. Well, I wasn't. He no, he didn't seem man. to be. He I seemed really man. strangely he comfortable with it. I mean, right away. No, yeah, he really did. What I was what I was concentrating on, we've got this bookstore in Cleveland yeah. called Zubles. Right. That's immense. You could take the Strand and put it in a corner it's of true. it. It's true. It's true. The Strand is a bookstore here in New York. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. Even I know that. Well, but somebody might not. I mean, not many, anyway, but a few. Anyway, uh, uh, this thing was so huge and had so much stuff in it he took that it was like there. it's he like I had, yeah. I had civic pride, you know, and Paul, <clears throat> I heard Paul collected books and was, was yeah. an avid reader and stuff like that. So I just wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to put over Zubel's bookstore. That was yeah. first on my, my agenda, you know, then, you know, we tackle the rest <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> You no, and I was impressed. And it's like royalty at this place. Is that right? Very it, well, nice. it was, really. Yes, Mr. no, Picard. he really is. Yeah, <laughs> yes. well, Picard is royalty. Yeah, right. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, they called me Harvey. You know. Yeah, they do. <laughs> All right, I, I want people to see that this is one where George Brabner contacts you asking for an issue <clears throat> of the comic book American Splendor. Here it is. Despite our steadily faltering business, my partner managed to sell the last copy of American Splendor number eight out from under me. I'm a big fan, and I hate to wait for a new order. Is there any way I can get it from you direct? Sincerely, Joyce Brabner. Man, she's got good looking handwriting. <laughs> That's your way. favorite scene want, in the movie? Want to do the, this, when I read that in the script, I thought, how great. Yeah. What a funny comment to, and on the toilet. I thought, That's great. Yeah. What was it, how was this to, to do, and was it difficult at all to capture? Yeah, well, I'd never done something that demanded a certain amount of mimicry before, right. so it was it was hard. But he's, you know, he's a very interesting subject yeah. for study, and, and especially when you're going to see the juxtaposition right there. Right, and so that actually made it easier in some ways because it was all, you know, it was very clearly defined what I had to capture. You know, so <laughs> it was, you know, so it's all right we there. We get along, you know, we think alike too. I think that helped. I think yeah. that helped help a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? You think? Well, alike? it means it means that sometimes I'll try and crack a joke and nobody else will laugh but, but Paul. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. I, yeah. I break the guy up. I love him. Yeah. What an audience. <laughs> this is true. the movie you said.
set out to make. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you change anything? Um, well, yeah. I mean, if you had more time or money I, or I more see, whatever. I see a few cuts I could make here and there. I'm not going to yeah. tell you what they are. <laughs> edits. <laughs> a few because, edits. Well, because... <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I always, when I watch one of our films... You know, everybody does. Everybody does. You, th you think if yeah, I had a little more time, I would have done this, I would have yeah. done that. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I mean, Bob works as the editor, so, yeah. and so I then take on the sole duty of being the director, so he's really obsessive about the editing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Never wants now, to let it go. The, the fact that you two are married, does that make it easy? I mean, you because you constantly know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And, doesn't make it easy. <laughs> 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 it make it more painful. <laughs> more painful? <laughs> Margo, what is it? We have a side conversation over no, here? No, no, no. I think you talked about marriage. They've and heard Bobby all this. started before. talking about marriage. <laughs> it's got a now, lot to say. What's the role of Joyce in your life? She's my wife. No, I know that. <laughs> she's, she's my, you know, she. She's your, she she's your, is she your things. rudder? Hmm. Stabilizing no, influence? Stabilizing. <laughs> <laughs> but choose your own sense? words. You don't have to take ours. That's true. No, I don't have to. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, you know, she, she, she takes care of our kid, Danielle. Yeah. And, uh, and she's a big business decision maker, you know, as I told you before. And uh, she pretty much... You know, she kind of bosses me, you know. Kind of bosses you. <laughs> yeah, she, she runs it. You like that, though, it seems to me. I just, you just don't on? have to. I, I, yeah, I depend. More like I depend. <clears throat> on, I don't have the strength to mm. yeah. put, put, you know, to counter that. Yeah. Now, speaking that of force that. of nature. That lymphoma. <laughs> the cancer. Yeah. You always thought this should be part of it. This is part of the story. Sure. Yeah. 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 Part, of part of his life. Is that hard for you? Well, yeah, it wasn't fun. I don't mean cancer. <laughs> no, that's tough. I mean, seeing it portrayed and... No, no. No. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't... It Anything wasn't that you wanted to be in the film that's not in the film? Not really. Not that mm -hmm. I can think of. I think they, they made excellent choices. I've yeah. been asked that question a few times. I've had time... Gee, I'm to... sorry I asked it. No, no, I'm, 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 I just wanted to tell you I have had time to ponder it, sir. <laughs> and after, after due deliberation, I, I think that I would just leave it about the way it was. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I can't even imagine or conceive yeah. of any cuts or edits that he would want to make in that. Either. Near the end, you two are switched in the film a couple of times, right? I guess we switch around the Letterman stuff, sort of. Mm -hmm. yeah. It starts well, to flip yeah. back and forth. We actually have the stock footage of of Harvey's Letterman appearances yeah. that we use. It starts yeah. to flip flop more. Yeah. Then you go back and yeah, yeah. right. <clears throat> That's great. That's right. That was a moment when we were writing the script that we knew we were in trouble because <laughs> you know on the one hand it was great we got very excited about it and then we realized we had to do it and uh, that's why the casting was was so fragile. Fragile. Yeah, because you know you're asking the audience to invest in. In an actor, and while you're seeing the real guy on the screen, and if they don't go with it, then the whole movie falls apart. Okay, one more scene. This is where <laughs> I can't wait for this. Joyce and Harvey have their first date. Here it is. <clears throat> it's food allergies to vegetables, which give me serious intestinal distress. I guess I have a lot of borderline health disorders that limit me politically when it comes to eating. Wow, you're a, you're a sick woman. Not yet, but I expect to be. Everyone in my family has some sort of degenerative illness. But but just back to cancer for a second before we go. The notion was it? It wasn't too personal. It wasn't too anything for you to write about. It. No, I mean it's your story. It's yeah. I don't I don't mind people knowing I had cancer. No, I don't mean that. But I mean you know it's it's more than that. I mean you know it has no. an impact. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I, don't I mean didn't think it was, I. You know, I, I, I write about stuff that, you know, uh, people can, you know, ident I hope that they can identify with it and, and, like, maybe feel like, wow, man, you know, like somebody else went through this and so maybe it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that my wife and I wrote uh, Our Cancer Year. And um, I, I thought that they would, uh, that this would be, it would be necessary to put this thing in the, in the film. That's a big momentous thing. Matter of fact, I've had a recurrence of it. I'm okay now, though. Hmm. Got, uh, I'm still in remission. You like jazz? Yeah. A I, lot. I write about it. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess you got I was me. just guessing. Or I thought maybe. The <laughs> moment I thought about it be country and western, no, then I, I said, I, no jazz. It's jazz. I think you, Charlie, I think you got me down. <laughs> <laughs> right hey, you know what? It is fun, too. Yeah. It really is. I think you should have taken your own show when they called you yeah. from Fox. It would have been a great show. Yeah. Not too late. It's not exactly. It's not too late. Yeah. Which, which is really, um, where does this go from here? I mean, you make a good movie. Is there is there a sequel to this? I don't know. Well, you you got to write it, and then we have to adapt yeah. it. We we were thinking of doing something from Joyce's perspective. Oh, oh really? there's yeah. a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. There is a good idea. Yeah. Joyce's yeah. revenge. <laughs> the revenge. Of Joyce. Right. Well, no, Joyce's right. Joyce story. <laughs> right. Or the, the Joyce's perspective. That's a great idea. What do you think? I think it's an excellent yeah. idea. Find a man up. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been fun to do. Yeah, oh, fun. Yeah, this is a fun set. Yeah, no, it really was fun. Yeah. Everybody really likes each other. Yeah. yeah. We had a good time. When people had time off, they'd go like record shopping with Harvey Absolutely. and stuff. There was yeah. a lot to of To buy going. jazz. Well, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Country yeah. and Western. If, if he was selling, he'd sell you anything. Like he'd sell He's got I'll a huge collection. He's got everything. Yeah. Who, who's your favorite? What, country and no, no, no. <laughs> Who is your favorite? I don't have any. There's so many great musicians. I don't have any Yeah, right. Figured you'd like Coltrane or I, yeah, I like Coltrane, but I like Louis Armstrong and I yeah, like. It's some, hard not to, isn't it? Nah, yeah, you're right. It's hard too for many. me not to, and yeah. I like some, <laughs> I like some pre Louis Armstrong figures too, like Johnny Dunn and people like that. Who do you, who are your literary influences? Um, James Joyce, uh, Arthur Miller, uh, George Ade, uh, Henry Roth, Daniel Fuchs are are among them. And uh, yeah. and uh, uh, as a kid, I loved a writer named Eleanor Estes, who wrote a, a series of books about a family called the Moffats, and I just thought, Connecticut. <laughs> oh, really? That's oh, yeah. in Connecticut? Well, not only Tom that, there used to be a congressman from, named Toby Moffat, who was from Connecticut. Oh, sure, right. I forgot about that. So the yeah. Moffats must be large in Connecticut. I've never heard of those books Maybe. before. Oh, well, they Connecticut. must not live in Connecticut. Oh, you should be living in Connecticut. Well, yeah. right, I don't know everything about <laughs> Connecticut. But <laughs> yeah, and Paul, I think I had to ask you, Paul's father was famous Bart Giamatti. Oh, I knew I knew President that. Yale, and then I President of the Unfortunately for him, the National League. Right, yeah. Because he loved the American yeah, League and the Red Sox. The Red Sox. <laughs> Harvey, is, yes, what do you, do you have any new dreams? I mean, what? My dream? Yeah. My dream is to... Or do we need to check with Joyce on this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you, man, this has been clear. My dream is uh, that uh, this movie becomes so popular that I get a whole lot of freelance writing jobs and make enough money to adequately sub, uh, uh, um, you know, beef up my uh, my government pension, and I can send my kid to school, stuff like that. That's what I'd like to do. That's I think the best I can see coming. This out never of this. made much money, did it? No, not the first time around. Yeah, no. not the first time around. I mean, uh, none of my books sold very well. I don't know why. But you're an endlessly fascinating guy. Thank you Thanks. for coming. Thanks. Well, thank you for having very us. Very much. Well, I, I know I speak for, well, for all of us when I say thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank it's, you. it's a great performance. Thanks it's a, a great lot. film. Thank you very much. Uh, thank critics you so say much. that who know a lot more about movies than I do. I mean, it has universally uh, been praised by a whole range of people uh, for a, a whole, not only because it's an interesting character at the center of it, but also uh, the way the story is told.